guys, welcome to All Electronics, I'm Gregory. Today we're gonna understand the Subharmonic Single Balance Set Mixer and we're gonna see a practical example here on the bench. Let's go! The idea consists in the upconversion of a low frequency IF signal here, 1 meg, to 2 gigahertz using a 1 gig LO signal. So the Subharmonic Mixer has this property of upconversion to the second harmonic of the input LO. This signal generator is generating our IF signal at 1 meg and negative 10 dBm. The generator here will be synthesizing our LO signal at 1 gig and a power of 7 dBm. We can look at the output being upconverted to 2 gig. Here we have a 2 gig signal, the two sidebands around the 2 gigahertz signal, the second harmonic of the LO. We can see here the full spectrum where you have the input LO at 1 gig and the output at 2 gigs with the two sidebands. It's very interesting that when we don't have the IF signal pres present, we have no output and no second LO. Very interesting. When we turn on the IF signal, the output comes on and is being modulated as you can see here. We have the IF signal entering here, these two ports. We have the LO power coming from this SMA cable here and the output up converted here at 2 gigs. So first the LO power comes here and is AC coupled to the diode and here at the output we have other AC couple as we're gonna see in the whiteboard. These capacitors are very important to isolate the IF from the LO and the RF port. We have here two quarter wave transformers this one is grounded at the end and this here is open circuit and they present the correct impedance at the diode junction here so this will work properly. We also here have a trap and a transmission line quarter wave transformer here that will uncouple the RF output from the IF. I also added here a trap for the LO signal because I was having a lot of LO leakage to the RF signal as the LO needed is very high, 7 dBm. It was leaking to the RF port with a very high power. So I designed this transmission line quarter wave transformer here to trap the signal at 1 GHz. It's important to find the correct powers of operation because it changes a lot the characteristic of the circuit. So we can see that if I change here the IF power, we have a trade-off of third order intercept and output power. And if I change the LO power, we can increase the third order intercept, but we're gonna lose the isolation from the upconverted signal and the K here. So we need to adjust the powers correctly and find here inside this trade-off the corrected powers for operation in our circuit. So guys, let's understand how it works. Actually, it's not so complicated and we can try to understand it looking at this model here. So before we go to the model, let's try to see here in the diagram what's really happening in the circuit. We have two back-to-back -back diodes, okay? And the LO power is injected here. So think that here we have a sinusoidal signal that is the LO power. It's a strong signal at half the output frequency. So here we have 1 gig. It's easy to see that current will be pumped through the diodes two times per cycle. Because in the positive cycle of the LO, one of the diodes will conduct. So let's say that in the positive cycle, this diode here will conduct. So we're going to have current in that direction. In the negative cycle, the bottom diode will conduct and we're gonna have current in this direction. What's really happening is that the impedance here between these two nodes is changing in, and is being modulated two times per cycle. So the effect of the modulation of the impedance here in the circuit is double. The frequency of modulation is double. No, let's erase this to draw it better because we need to draw it bigger. Let's cut 
part of the circuit here, okay, no problem. Now it's gonna be better. So we have the LO power and we have positive cycles and LO negative cycles, okay? And here, so here is the LO and this will be the impedance through the diodes. So let's call it Z, the impedance of the diodes. The impedance of the diodes will be modulated always when the LO voltage crosses the thresholds of the diodes. So let's say that we have the positive, the, the, the upper diode uh, with this positive threshold and the lower diode with this negative threshold. Every time the LO crosses the threshold, the diodes will conduct and the impedance here will drop. So the impedance, the impedance of the diode, the impedance of the diode will be low every time that the LO crosses the threshold. So we can see that the impedance modulation here through the diodes happens at a double the frequency of the LO. So now we can justify this model here as the LO switching the IF and RF path to ground at two times. This switching action caused by the impedance here will be at two times the frequency. For this circuit to work properly, we need to match the impedance and to present the correct impedance in all the ports. So at the LO input, we have a quarter wave transmission line tapped to ground, grounded here. As it is a quarter wave transmission line for the LO frequency, here it will appear as an open circuit here because we grounded here and it will transform the impedance of the ground of zero to infinite. So for the LO, this node here will be infinite and we are not losing any LO here in this uh, 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 transmission line here. But for two times the frequency for the RF, now this transmission line is lambda over two because we have two times the frequency here. So now for the output frequency, this transmission line presents a ground here and it serves as the RF ground that grounds the diodes, as I showed here, only to the RF frequency. The other quarter wave transmission line here operates as the opposite of this one here. Now we have a transmission line here that is open circuited here at, at the end. So now for the LO, this open circuit will be transformed to ground, so infinite will becomes zero ground here, and this transmission line becomes a ground to the LO. Very nice. But now for the RF frequency, two times the LO frequency, this open circuit will not be transformed, because for two times the frequency, this transmission line is lambda over two, and now we present an open circuit only to the RF. So we use the fact that we have two times frequency and this lambda over four and lambda over two relation to make a circuit that is symmetrical when you look for, from one side and when you look for the other side. For the RF signal, these transmission lines act as a ground. And for the LO, this transmission line acts as a ground. Very interesting. Now we can inject the IF power in this node here to be modulated by the impedance modulation of the, of the diodes here. So we are going to use a lambda over 4 choke here. I draw it as a choke, but it can also be um, a transmission line. Here in the practical circuit, I use it a transmission line. And we need to present a very low impedance at this node here. So what's really happening? The IF is a very low frequency. So it can pass through and appears at this node with no problem, okay? But we need to prevent the RF output here, the power that needs to flow to the output to be flowing back to the IF port. So we do this in this way here, we present a very low impedance to the RF here. We can use a capacitor or an open-ended transmission line, quarter rate transformer transmission line here. Here in the, in the circuit, I use it, uh, this option here, the transmission line. 
okay? And now this transmission line will uh, transform the open circuit to a zero, to a ground here in this node. Now we take this ground here and transforms again to a high impedance using this lambda over for choke here. I draw it, it as a choke, but it can also be here at transmission line. So we have open circuit here, ground, and we transform the impedance back to open circuit here. So the RF signal only in the RF frequency, it looks here like an open circuit. But the IF, its very low frequency, can flow unchanged to this node here to be modulated by the diode action. To help prevent the IF to flow back to the LO and to the RF, we're gonna couple the input and the output with two high impedance capacitors here. Okay? In this circuit here, I use it here at the input 105 picofarad and here 68 pic. So what happens is that these capacitors are very low impedance to the high frequency signal, but they are very high impedance to the IF. The IF is grounded through the diodes by this transmission line here. This is very nice. This transmission line is a short for the low frequency and acts as a ground here, a directly connected ground for the IF power. Very nice. I really like this RF breadboard technique here because you can easily change the stubs and transmission lines using cuts of copper tape. So here I needed a small increase in the length of this stub, so I cut it a small piece of copper, place it here and I could tune the circuit to the precisely frequency I needed and it worked very well.